this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the missing needle thread tension unit on this uh, Singer 401A that I named Trouble. <laughs> and uh, I just decided to go ahead and, and uh, video some of it since I was doing a little work today. I uh, you, you can buy uh, tension units use vintage tension units on eBay and I guess now Amazon and it's, you know I've done enough of these slant machines over the years that um, I scrounged up the parts to just kind of build one and uh, just for your information the model 401A 403A and 404 use the same uh, tension unit and uh, there was a time you could buy a tension unit from a 404 real cheap because nobody heard of it. The 404, you know. Everybody wanted this uh, fancy 401A machine. But um, I've, I've got the parts here, and I just wanted to mention a couple of things about them. If it, uh, most of it is aluminum uh, parts and, and the other the steel. And uh, sometimes you will find rust on some. If you buy a used tension unit, you know, people say it came off a working machine. <laughs> and uh, I've had some in pretty rough shape when I got them. But uh, if you do have r if some rust on the steel, you, you can remove that. Um, where I find rust usually would be in the beehive spring that that is inside the machine because it is made of a steel and it's not like chrome so it's a little bit more susceptible to rust and uh, what did I do with it? Uh, the other thing I have found sometimes with some rust and often very dirty is the the check spring or the take up spring on the machine can be uh, rusty especially for some reason up on this loop and uh, back in this area here I have found rust. You want to remove rust. I The rust remover the only one I've ever used was this crud cutter product which is the same as the cleaner I use and it's called the must for rust. I think this eight ounce bottle of it was six or seven dollars maybe a little more last time I bought it and uh, I've used this a lot maybe you've seen some videos I have of that it's kind of a stinky little uh, product kind of a, an odd smell to it but uh, this one is fairly new the other one I had lasted me for a long time because you don't need a lot if you uh, just put a little bit on there, literally you can wipe it or brush it on and uh, just let it sit and it will just kind of eat the rust unless the thing is just a solid cone of rust, you know. And then you can just uh, rinse it off with water or alcohol if you want but it's very effective and uh, if you have rust on the on the uh, take up spring it's it's kind of the the same uh, way um, you know a, a cleaner like crud cutter is a cleaner degreaser and it's going to get off a lot of muck and crud and grease and oil and stuff like that but it absolutely doesn't do anything with uh, rust it just it just won't take rust off of anything whoops I got the little cotton piece stuck on the the little spring tail right there so if if uh, if I do get some rust I usually try and clean that off first and uh, it's just it's just quick and it it works very very well. You know the thread guard had rust and the 
the little tension disc had rust and stuff like that and I'll just put them all like in the plastic cap of a detergent bottle and just put in enough of this product to cover it let it sit there five or ten minutes um, while I've got this rust free <laughs> tension uh, take up spring I wanted to talk about it a little bit because sometimes these have been bent and especially if people have like taken off the tension unit and, and not quite knowing what they're doing and and bent this thing up pretty good and I'll, I'll go ahead and put this unit together on the machine real quick and I will zero it out and stuff set it set the tension to the factory thing but if you're interested in these tension units I have a six or seven part series all about tension and uh, I've done other tension unit videos but that all about tension is you know six or seven videos it really gets into detail how it works and how to put it together and how to fix some of the parts and stuff and I'll put a link to that at the ending screen of this video if you want to look at that playlist or series of, of videos but I mentioned this because you can buy new you can buy these new okay and I have used them with pretty good success, the new ones. But I just want to say that they are a tiny bit different. They have a little bit bigger diameter. A little bit bigger around. Um, on the factory one, you can kind of tell it's a factory one. Because with the, with the loop down that tail is going to be up here towards the top like anywhere from uh, 11 to 1 usually right at 12 o'clock and I'll explain why later on the on these what I call aftermarket ones or non original equipment manufacturer with with that loop down the tail is usually down here at 5 o'clock so that's that's a way I look at it when I take it apart and and to see oh good this is the the original spring or it's a replacement okay now besides besides being a little bit bigger diameter um, the the length of the coil is maybe just one coil uh, you know one turn longer it's just a tiny bit longer but also what has bothered me a little bit is that this loop and the eyelet loop that goes around the tension stud are a little bit bigger so the loop on the new one here is a bigger diameter than the original and the uh, you know this finger or this extended loop that the, the actual thread checks against is also just a wee bit wider not much now I've had good success using this on on the original parts um, but you have to kind of be careful when when you're when you're putting it in because it um, it is one loop uh, longer and you, I've ha it's had for me it's had a tendency to like get caught and bend like that so the end isn't isn't really go doesn't really go in flat against the back of here but it gets hung up someplace and it gets kind of like that and you think you know you it looks good and you think you got it in there but it just doesn't operate right even if you set the the stroke or tension on it as you you would see in that series but it just doesn't there's just something about it and I finally had figured that out so I have used them and you can buy these from different sellers online and at eBay you know and they're they're good quality 
they're very springy they have the right very comparable amount of spring and they've got the little tail you need and stuff they're just a tiny bit bigger and if you have to get one just be aware of those differences when you're putting it on the machine that's what I wanted to point out so uh, like I said I have I found all of the parts here and I'm going to put them in this uh, strainer Oop, can I get down here let's make this out a little bit and I'm and I'm going to wash them just take them to the sink and I'm going to spray them with a solution of about 25 percent a crud cutter to get all the old oil and and muck and grease and stuff off of them and then I'm going to blow them dry with a blow dryer see that's got some some oil and dirt on it there and and get everything nice and clean and dry yeah there's some crud on the back of that but one thing that I do where's that knurled so one thing I wanted to point out was this is the the knurled uh, knob that you know you you set the tension with stuff like that but it has a tiny tiny set screw in there to hold the the little chrome cap that goes over this to hold everything together so that that slips on right at the end and you you put this little tiny thing in here I, I I keep it separate I don't wash that because I don't want to lose it look how tiny that little set screw is Whew. okay so I usually put it in a magnetic dish or something the other thing that I, I just kind of clean by hand on the bench because I don't want to lose it is the tension releasing pin that has the little flange on one end and it it goes inside the the tension stud and uh, well I'll, sh I'll show you that when I put it together but um, I've lost this before too while uh, cleaning and blow drying so I'll just uh, clean it you know like spray a little bit maybe I'll do that now I'll just spray a little bit of this uh, or drip <laughs> drip a little bit of cleaner on there this is the crud cutter formula and I'll just uh, you know wipe it like that if there's oil and dirt and thing now if there's rust in here you can clean it with the rust remover too very easily so um, I just wanted to point out keep those separate maybe is a good idea so the rest of the parts now I'm just going to take in the sink and I have a spray bottle with my mixture of crud cutter 25 percent so literally I spray them off I'll examine them uh, in case I I have some really thick oil on the back of these or something I might want to wipe with a sponge or a toothbrush or something rinse it with water and then blow it dry with the blow dryer so that's what I'm going to do and then I'll come back and and just assemble this piece at a time on the machine real quick so you kind of get an idea okay here's all my clean and dry parts I do want to uh, mention if you use the crud cutter on these that there's um, a paint on here um, and it can dull it can kind of like fade this paint off this aluminum piece so if you use the crud cutter just like spray it and rinse it um, you can also just wash it with hand and you don't need to use crud cutter on this I have just soaked these in, in rubbing alcohol for a while and I've also just soaked them in a you know like a bowl with some dish detergent um, just like joy or, or whatever 
kind of grease cutting dish detergent like you wash dishes in the sink with and uh, that has worked well I usually just use the crud cutter because it's so it's quick but uh, you don't have to use that and then there's a couple of parts that I do put oil on after I've cleaned them to grease them and one is the, the beehive uh, screw or a spring, sorry, beehive spring, and I'll just put a little oil and uh, just rub it on there to just give it a light coating of oil. I, I don't want to get oil on any part of this tension unit that contacts the thread, <laughs> you know, because then it, it can't put tension. But just a, a light coating of oil on the uh, beehive spring and this is the longest set screw on the machine that holds the tension stud in place and uh, I'll go ahead and put a little oil on the thread and just just a drop we're talking very light uh, coating of oil and you can even wipe off the excess if you want and then there is a screw that holds the thread guides in and I'll put a little coating on that and uh, then on the tension releasing pin I'll put just a light coating of oil after I have it cleaned up okay and then uh, clean clean the oil off your fingers or gloves or whatever because you don't want to get any oil um, on the tension disc especially <laughs> so I learned that the hard way <laughs> so when I start with this um, I, I want to put the tension stud in and I'm one oh you know what I am going to do this too there's three little places I use this interdental brush and a Christmas tree shaped brush and I run it through where the disc is going to go put a little oil in there and where the retaining screw for the thread guards go and up here in the nose where that long uh, set screw goes I'm going to oil those threads in there okay that's enough then when I put the tension stud on um, you, you want it uh, kind of sitting like that so that the opening is horizontal so if you you put it in and you got to twist it and you, you must make sure it's all the way seated back there you can hear it kind of hit the back there make sure you're all the way in okay and then I'll get my set screw started uh, installing in there and that set screw just goes in at a 90 degree angle to the stud and you know tightens up against it and that's what keeps your stud in and it keeps the stud from turning so once I get about ready I'm just going to slip this indicator uh, this is the indicator and it's got the plus minus symbol and that's going to go on top so I like to set that in there so that when I look at it I can use that plus minus to, to kind of make sure that I'm getting that uh, lined up so that this is horizontal if you're off a tiny bit it's not going to matter much but I just want to try and get it in there as straight and level as I can so I just slip that indicator on for a moment and then 
I'll come and tighten this uh, set screw up. Can you see that on the? I'll, I'll tighten that up against that tension stud, and I'm just going to gently turn it till I feel it kind of hit the stud, and then I'm going to make sure this is level and make sure it's pushed all the way in. Because if that is sticking out a little bit, that can mess up your thread tension. There, okay. Make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so we've got our stud in. And then uh, this might be a good time to put in the tension releasing pin. See that little flanged end? That, that is going to face you. And the little bullnose end is going to go in first. And it's just going to go in the hole down the middle of the tension stud. Got to kind of line it up in there. Then I just use my little tension screwdriver to push it back in there. Okay. Then what you should see inside, if you're... Uh, look, I don't know if I can get a light in here or not. Let me see. Is You'll see the end of that stud is flushed with the aluminum casting. And if you uh, press presser bar down, if you push that pin in all the way, you'll see about an eighth of an inch of that pin sticking out the back. I don't know. That's eh. Might be able to see that right there, the pin sticking out the back. And the reason for that is when you lift your presser foot, there's a tension releasing lever, like a crooked U shape. And when you lift this end of it, it pushes this end of it of the tension releasing bracket it pushes it against the end of that pin and that pushes the pin out here and pushes the parts against the beehive and releases tension on the disc so when you're threading the unit or you're going to remove your work from under the needle and you lift this up it takes tension off the needle thread so you can pull your work out so that's why this is up when you thread the needle. So there's no tension here and you can run the thread between the discs. So to see if you've got this in all the way and your tension pin, you can, you can put your screwdriver in there and lift this and you should feel your screwdriver getting pushed away. Which I, I don't know if you can... Let me stick it this way. Can you see that, that that pin is pushing? I can feel it. I don't know how well it's showing up on here. Hard for me to see in the back of the camera. It only moves it, again, about that eighth of an inch or less, but you can, you can tell that you've done it properly, okay? Get this desk light out of there. So I've got I've got all that set to go. Unit on first, and this upper um, thread guide, the tall one, kind of tall vertically, is going to go on there first, like that. And then the, the smaller one that's more uh, horizontal is going to go on next. So that this adjustment slot is on the outside. And uh, this... Uh, hole up here 
is going to line up with the finger hole of a thread guard that we're going to put on. And then this slot is going to line up down here for the mounting screw. And it's adjustable. And uh, what you want to do is start out with the screw in about the middle of that slot. So let me just get it in there for a second and get it uh, started and then we'll tighten it up and I'll show you what I mean about putting it in the middle. Let me get it most of the way in and uh, then we'll finish it up here. So here's that little rest or stop that the spring is going to sit on and this has to be lined up hole to hole with the screw about in the middle or a little towards the right and both of these fully on the opening ring there they sit perfectly that stop should be kind of level horizontally okay and when you when you've got them like that just go ahead and tighten the mounting screw to keep them there. There's an adjustment later called setting the stroke. And that's in one of the videos of that tension unit series I was telling you about. Setting the stroke is how far the spring travels before it comes to rest on that stop because you want it to rest on that stop the check spring just as the eye of your needle is entering your fabric so uh, you can loosen that and you can twist this a little to make the stop higher shorter stroke or make the stop lower for a longer stroke okay and You'll see in that setting the stroke video how to do that. Let me just kind of get it a little bit to the right of center. That's about right. Okay. Now let's go back to this, uh, what was supposed to be a five-piece um, parts together here. I forgot the... Uh, thread guard here that goes on okay and this has got the little finger guide for your thread to go through and it has this post that goes up and goes in the hole and that's what keeps this from twisting so that's why there's a hole in the thread guard and a hole in the machine there's no threads or anything but it's just going to slide on over those parts and go right in that hole so you get this in the front and you get your three discs now. Okay, this little thread guard. And now you put your check spring with, this, with this, the small single loop or the eyelet loop in the front. Coil in the back. Finger post up. Just kind of get it started on there so you've got all five of those pieces. Then you've got to turn your finger up to go in the hole, but you don't want to push that spring back until it's pointed down. Okay, so let's get it all in there and let's see. Nope, I twisted a little. See how this is pointing to the left? So when I put it up here, I'm going to move that spring and put it up on that rest. There's not enough tension. So let me pull this back out. Let me get up above the camera instead of trying to do this through the camera. Get the pieces on here. Get that to the left. There, get my tail in there. Maybe get the tail in first. So this is hanging down and then push that post in the hole. Now I've got my tail hanging down better. That's my loop. That's what I should have. 
Now holding that on, I'm going to bend that loop up and over and rest it right on that little arm that sticks out that's called the rest, R-E-S-T, or the stop. And that gives me very close to perfect tension. Make sure my spring is back in there, everything is back in there all the way. I'm going to put my indicator plate on with my plus, whoops, with my plus minus up, like that. See, that's what's going to hold the thread guard and spring and all those discs in there. I'm going to put my little uh, beehive spring. And you see how that front coil only goes halfway around and cuts across? That's so that that arm, that the part that cuts across, can go into the slot. And I usually put the half coil on the bottom. Now that is made so the spring doesn't just twist around, see? So I've got the little spring tail in the back of the check spring in the gear to keep it from spinning. Now I put the beehive spring tail or cross arm into the slot to keep it from spinning. I'm going to put my stop washer. This little washer helps hold that spring back, but it has this uh, finger that sticks up. This one is straight. Some curve a little. Some of the fingers come up and curve, and if you have a curve, face it towards you. This doesn't have a curve, so it can go either way. I'm going to slide that onto the slot. There. Once I get my stop finger, or stop washer with the little finger pointed up, I'm going to put on this little uh, adjustment part here. This is threaded inside and out. It's threaded inside so that it can screw onto the stud. It's threaded on the outside so that the knurled knob can screw onto it. Okay. So this is going to go now against the stop washer. And be careful threading threading this on. This stud is aluminum and you don't want it cross threaded so if it if it doesn't want to go on even see how it's can you, see how it's kind of crooked on there it's kind of pointing down that's common just kind of twist it backwards twist it left or wiggle it till you get it seated on there flat and it should be fairly easy to put on. You'll feel some resistance, but if you if you get it up or down, you could strip the threads. And nobody makes these studs anymore that I know of. So I kind of turn it backwards while I'm pushing. I turn it left to kind of get it seated. Now yeah, I don't think I got it. There we go. Now see how it can twist all the way and put pressure. Mm -hmm. Then when I lift this, you'll see the indicator plate move forward against the spring. See that? Let me see this angle. See that? That takes tension off the disc. When you drop the bar in the foot, it puts tension on the disc and therefore the thread. So we got to stop here and we got to zero this unit out now for tension. Okay. Okay, so I just I just set the arm cover up here and got a spool pin temporary in there. I'm going to put thread on here so that I can thread this unit. In the service manual, you'll see that they like to use Mercerized Cotton number 50. So I've found a few spool of these in sewing kits when I bought machines. So I go ahead and use it. But you got to remember these instructions are from the 1950s. So you can do use probably any thread you want. I'm going to go ahead and use the cotton 50 since I got it. And I'm going to come right up here through my top arm cover thread guide. And I'm going to come down here. 
and I want to put the thread between the discs. Okay. So I'm going to lift my presser bar up, which removes the tension on those discs. And I'm going to slide the thread between two of the discs. Okay. Then I'm going to bring it up against the check spring. I'm going to hold the thread here so I can get tension on it and lift that thread up and over the little position finger. You hear a little click. And then I'm going to bring it up like that. Okay. So that is the position point for uh, setting the, the zero out the tension. Now that I've got it through the discs and everything, I'm going to drop the presser bar. So now I've got tension. And what I want is when I am set this up, so when I turn it to zero, I don't have any thread tension or just barely. Now see how much it's pulling this straight up and my thread isn't even moving through it's so tight so while I'm pulling gently up I'm going to start turning this to the left up oh, see how it just fell down now you see when I'm I'm just going to keep pulling the thread up but you see how that check spring is just barely starting to move and then it lets the thread slide through if I turn it to the right for more tension that spring comes way up. Now if you have a tension meter you want 5 to 15 grams of, of tension on that thread when it starts to move. If you don't have a tension meter just put a little too much tension on and start turning left until it just barely starts lifting that up. See how just lifting that a little bit? Right that's enough that's zeroed out the tension that should be very close if you want a little more or a little less go ahead but that on zero you want just to barely feel any drag or zero tension and remember that's with your presser bar down and tension on the disc Okay, before I put the rest of the parts on, I think I'll just go ahead and use my little tensile meter and and uh, and check the grams on this. See how close I got. Again, the the spec said five to fifteen grams, and um, I bought this at the featherweight shop featherweight store for $6.95 it's just a very simple one you can find Bob and tension meters on uh, Amazon and probably eBay and stuff like that but I, I did without one for years and then I got curious so I I bought this one for $6.95 so with my Presser bar, presser foot down, so I've got that little bit of drag at zero. I'm going to just clip this on the thread here and hold it. I'm going to look at this side of the meter because it reads in grams. And as I start pulling this up, it's going to move the, the arrow. And it's pretty steady staying right there and that's a 10 let me try that again here yeah 10 or 11 which is this uh, this line right there so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that I got in the 5 to 15 range and that's why I said you could you could do you could tweak this a little bit more if you wanted 
let me just do a little eat just a tiny <laughs> tiny bit there um, now you know some some models of singer have uh, more than this like I think the 221 is set for 25 grams of pull let's see how I did with this yeah that that put it right I sorry you can't see <laughs> that put it right at about 15 so I was at 10 11 I just changed it to 14 to 15 and I don't know if you notice what a tiny amount I turned that but I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to leave it there. Do now is put on this numerated dial. And, uh, you know, with behind the zero here, there is a little protrusion or a nub that's built in called the, uh, I'll just call it the stop nub. And that stop washer had a stop finger sticking up. And that's to stop the dial when you do one full turn. You don't want to just like keep turning left and take it off. So when you put the numerator dial on, the zero with the stop nub behind it has to be on the right side of the stop finger. So I'll just put it up there at about one. Okay. And just for a second, I'm going to hold it up against there and make sure my down and then I'm going to turn it to zero and make sure it stops. So it stops a little bit past the zero. So that's good. Now if you notice on the indicator there's a there's a minus with a vertical line and then the plus sign. If you put your zero lined up with that vertical line and you hold the numerated dial right there because you can actually turn this past zero so at zero I'm going to have about 15 grams which is what the spec said if I turn this tension dial all the way to the left I'll be past zero which should give me like zero grams right Okay, then I'm going to put my knurled knob onto that threaded adjuster uh, with the cups facing me so I can put the nice pretty cap on. So I'll just start left a little to get it seated. Same thing, you just take your time with this. You don't want to... Uh, you don't want to get it cross-threaded. There we go. And I'm just going to tighten that up until it hits the numerated dial. Right? So I've got that zeroed out and now I've got the knurled knob up there against everything holding it at the zero out point then somehow I lucked out and my set screw is facing up but no matter where it faces you just tighten that knob up against the numerated dial which you want at the zero on the vertical line between the minus and the plus now we'll put this little chrome cap on there. And it just slides on. It doesn't thread on or anything. And now I've got to get that little tiny <laughs> um, set screw into the knurled knob and tighten down now to hold everything in. So I'm just going to take my... I have a little... $4 magnetizer. I'm just going to rub this in here a few times and get some magnification. Magnetize. No, magnification. <laughs> uh, magnetize this screwdriver tip a little bit to hold that thread or, or the set screw. Whew. 
Man, that's tiny. It's only got like three threads on it. See if I can get this on the end of the screwdriver. And keep it there. Oh, it's on the side of it. <laughs> get the screwdriver in the slot. There we go. Now I'm going to go up here and get that in there. Make sure that's... Oh, good. It went right in. And then I'm going to tighten that nice and firm. There we go. So, with my presser foot down, I've got 15 grams of tension as I start going to the right. You'll see it's pulling that check spring up more and more. And I can start pulling the thread. More tension, tension, tension. I can feel it's getting harder and harder and harder to pull until I'll go up all the way and it's Oop, there my thread broke before I could pull it anymore <laughs> but then as I start going back turning it uh, let me let me lift this up and get a hold of that thread get a little slack out of there so th there's come on you Oop. there now as I go left and left it's getting easier and easier to pull until I get back down to the zero and I just get some movement on that check spring. If I go past the zero, as far as it'll go, it just barely moves that check spring. I'm really happy with that. I think I've got that zeroed out very, very well. Yay! So. Let me uh, gonna go ahead and throw away this piece of thread I used. I figure if I keep using the same piece of thread, it's just going to get flat. <laughs> All right. So one thing I want to show you here before I go is that uh, if you want to take the tension unit out, there's an adjustment called setting the tension of this where you can move the tail on the back end to a different slot. You don't have to take it all apart here. okay? And I really encourage you to follow the link at the end of the video to that, to that tension series all about tension. If you have any other tension issues or if you just want to know more about the theory of tension and all these how these parts work and how to to set up everything but since I'm going to be washing this machine I'm going to go in here and loosen the set screw that uh, holds it in place matter of fact I'm going to take out that set screw <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to remove the tension unit so I don't damage it or anything while I've when I take this into the shower right and I just wanted to show you that once you once you have your tension zeroed out like that or if it comes to you and your tension is working fine but you want to clean you don't have to disassemble that whole tension unit uh, you can loosen this enough to pull it out and then tighten it back in if you want or like me just keep it in a magnetic dish but once that is pulled out you can just kinda wiggle that tension unit and you can pull the whole thing right out so there's my tension releasing pins sticking out here's my check spring you see all the discs if, if I hold it back here you know I I turn it left to release the tension I can turn it right to make increase it and there's my little tail see that spring tail right there um, it's be it's between these two gear teeth right here so there is a procedure to pull that out 
this way and twist the spring and put it back in a different slot to the left or right to have more or less tension on this. And that's in setting the stroke and tension is in one of those videos. So I'm just going to take this out and put it aside and keep it so that uh, after I get the machine all cleaned up and waxed and ready to go, one of the last things I, I can do is just put this right back in with the finger post in the, whoops, maybe I'll turn that finger post in the hole up there and I'll just take my uh, put it right back in there and then tuck that check spring up on the little rest or stop again make sure it's fully and completely in and then hold it in while I put that set screw back in and my tension will be all reinstalled and it will re uh, maintain the setting where I zeroed it out. So like when I service my wife's machines a couple times a year one of the things I do is, is take this out when I kind of clean and stuff and then I can make sure that I vacuum it out good and get everything all cleaned up and it's real easy to do and then just put it back in and put the check spring on the rest and put the set screw in okay so in case you've never seen that that might be of some interest to you and if you've seen my other tension videos so thanks for watching this one anyway and uh, I just thought I'd do it since I had to rebuild the tension unit on there. And one last thing I wanted to show you was uh, <clears throat> if you remember uh, when I took out the broken screws and I found some screws from a 404, the, the bronze ones, as a replacement. And the, the ones that that were broken were, were the bright metal screws the same size as the bronze screws for the 404 so I was going to use them but look what somebody sent me in the mail brand well not brand new new to me actual screws from either a 401 or a 403 the bright metal screws and the friend asked to remain anonymous but happened to catch the video and sent me a little padded envelope and said uh, found these and thought you could use them <laughs> so thank you you know who you are <laughs> so uh, just in case in the final slideshow of the machine that I usually do if you see the bright metal screws up there that's how they got there thanks for tuning in uh, so much uh, it'll be a while now I'm going to strip back down this machine and clean it and uh, purdy it up as much as possible and uh, I'll show you uh, the end of this series will just be a nice slideshow of trouble uh, cleaned up and working as best as I could uh, get him to be so maybe you'll catch that uh, slideshow in the future either way thanks for watching today and take care of yourself